Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for your promptness in coming to order. We will officially call to order the special public hearing session of the Randolph County Board of Commissioners. And uh, <clears throat> our purpose for being here today, and I want to tell you up front, <clears throat> a lot of work and time and effort has gone into getting us to this point. And uh, this might seem like a, a, a short and simple version but it did not take it was not a short and simple process to get us here and the county has been fully involved in all of that process to get us to this point today and obviously um, I know all of you are aware there is a planned announcement at two o'clock this afternoon uh, at which time the specific client will be named and for um, confidentiality and for respect of those that have been involved in the process, including the governor of North Carolina, that, that name will be announced at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, there's been a lot speculated about that client, and um, some of it has not been so secret. But we are here today <coughs> for two purposes. One is to consider economic development incentive grants to a major manufacturing company who plans to build, equip, and operate manufacturing operations in Randolph County in uh, North Carolina. Um, the second thing is the conveyance of property to that same client. We have been acquiring land. The Greensboro Randolph Megasite Foundation has been acquiring property. <coughs> the funding for that has come from the Bryan Foundation in Greensboro. And the North Carolina Railroad has purchased almost two-thirds of the property that we'll be, we'll be talking about today. So our conveyance will be the property that we and the Megasite Foundation own. That's all been granted to the county as one, as one entity now. So that's the purpose of our meeting today. And again, we welcome each one of you here for this purpose. It, it is a public hearing. There's a sign-up sheet if anyone uh, has not it does want to speak and is not signed up so uh, with that i want to recognize uh, kevin franklin who's the president of the randolph county economic development corporation our economic developers have, have led this effort and i can tell you um, there's been times when they didn't know when one day ended and the next one started um, and it's been a, a yeoman's task and a, and a fully organized and cooperative process, and I think Kevin would be the first to tell you that, but we're proud of our, our economic development president and his team that has uh, been working through this thing so tirelessly. So with that, Kevin, uh, give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good morning. It's an exciting day for Randolph County. And thank you for taking time today to consider an offer of incentives for a transformational project at the Greensboro Randolph Megasite. Um, some of my comments may mirror a little bit what uh, Chairman Fry has already mentioned, but I, I did want to go ahead and make sure that I had um, drafted comments so that I didn't miss anything. 
The project under consideration, consideration today is really a result of a, a decade of planning and preparation and investment by Randolph County and multiple partners, some of whom Mr. Chairman has already mentioned. And I'm very pleased to provide an overview of the project for you this morning. And as the Chairman has mentioned, we'll, we'll be discussing this project really under its code name Project Darwin today. Uh, as it is still confidential, but we are excited about this opportunity and the potential partner for our community. Project Darwin is considering a significant investment at the Greensboro Randolph mega site to develop and operate a manufacturing facility. For the project, the company would commit to an investment of at least $1 billion and create at least 1,750 jobs at the site with an annual average wage of at least $62,000. $234, which is approximately $28,000 above the current median annual wage in Randolph County. Project Darwin is also evaluating a subsequent expansion of its operations. In the event that Project Darwin proceeds with such expansion, the county would provide certain additional incentives if Project Darwin commits to um, a minimum total project of investment of at least $3 billion and creation of a total of at least 3,875 3, jobs. So let me talk a little bit about the incentives, and certainly you as county commissioners and staff are familiar with these. This is really is an overview more for those that are in, in hearing um, from the public today. At the conclusion of today's, today's public hearing, you will be asked to consider um, two resolutions which include three components to the local incentives offer. The first component of local incentives consideration is a cash grant related to the taxable value of Project Darwin's capital investment in real and business personal property in Randolph County. For a phase one commitment, which is again $1 billion investment and 1,750 jobs, Randolph County would pay the company the equivalent of 60% of actual tax receipts in annual payments over a 20 year term. Because there are often questions about the source of funds for incentives, I'd like to reiterate that this cash grant will be funded by returning a percentage of what the company has already paid in property taxes. So we're not taking from someone else to give back to this company. It's returning a portion of their property taxes already paid. So what does this look like in dollars and cents? Based on company-provided investment projections and proposed development timeline, and certain assumptions made by the county, tax rate, for example, depreciation schedule, it is projected that the phase one investment will yield gross tax receipts of approximately $108 million over a 20 year period, with approximately 65 million being paid to Project Darwin in incentives and the county retaining roughly $43 million. Should Project Darwin announce the increase to the overall commitments for the project, which we refer to collectively as phase two, which again, total minimum investment of $3 billion and 3,875 jobs, uh, that announcement would have to take place within three years of the initial announcement, which is scheduled for this afternoon. In that case, Randolph County would pay the company the equivalent of 70% of tax receipts and annual payments over the 20 year term. And just to be honest, projecting those tax receipts for phase two is more difficult since we don't have a firm investment schedule for phase two. So I, I really don't even want to speculate here publicly about what those potential gross tax receipts might be. The second component of the local incentive consideration is a reimbursement of building permit fees paid by or on behalf of Project Darwin to Randolph County. The reimbursement would be payable annually over the five year development period of project. And should Project Darwin announce a phase two expansion, permit fees would be reimbursed annually for the five year phase two development period as well. The third component of the total incentive consideration, as Chairman Fry has mentioned, is conveyance of county owned mega site property to Project Darwin. And so just to be clear about this, I want to make a few notes on this point. So conveyance of land is contingent upon an initial or phase one commitment by Project Darwin. Currently, Again, as Chairman Fry has, has uh, stated, there are three entities that own property at the mega site. These are the Randolph County Government, the Greensboro Randolph Mega Site Foundation, and the North Carolina Railroad Company. The Greensboro Randolph Mega Site Foundation will convey its land to Randolph County. So the land conveyed to Project Darwin by Randolph County will include land currently owned by the mega site foundation. The railroad will convey its property separately and directly to Project Darwin. 
conveyance of land by Randolph County comes with a statutory requirement that the company make sufficient taxable investment in the site over a five-year period, that the county will recoup the fair market value of the conveyed property and tax receipts over a 10-year period. So again, to reiterate, their investment over a five-year period must return enough tax receipts to the county over a 10-year period to cover the fair market value of the property conveyed. If the company investment by year five is not sufficient to generate tax receipts retained by the county in 10 years equal to or exceeding the fair market value of the property conveyed by the county, then the company will make a deficiency payment to the county to cover the difference. It is our recommendation based on comps for industrial land sales in the region over the past six years and current listings for the industrial land that the commissioners determine the fair market value of the property to be $34,902 per acre and you all have a copy of the comps that we um, use to determine this value. And the resolution for consideration of incentives will include a statement that the county commissioners approved this finding of fair market value. In closing, the significant investment and job creation commitments by Project Darwin are exactly the type of end result envisioned by the whole Board of Commissioners when the initial vote was taken back in 2015 to invest in the purchase of property at the Greensboro Randolph megasite. Your support as a board of economic development activities through the location and expansion of manufacturing companies supports a strong local economy, a growing tax base that keeps tax rates low for all, and much needed job opportunities for local citizens. I encourage you to approve the incentive proposal before you today so that we can welcome Project Darwin to Randolph County with open arms. And Mr. Chairman, that concludes my comments this morning. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Does uh, any commissioner have a question of, of Kevin this morning? All right. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I do want to just make a, a couple of points there. When he mentions fair market value, fair market value, current fair market value is not the value, or not what the county and the railroad pay actually paid for the property. Uh, just for your knowledge. Uh, the county has about fifteen and a half million dollars are invested in this process. We got a m and that includes a million six hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars <coughs> that um, Speaker Boo Baker got for this project before he uh, exited his office in Raleigh. And the three and a half million dollar upfront payment that the county received from waste management was also a part of this project. So about five and a half million of that came from other sources, and we had sort of set a number 10 years ago of about $10 million, and that's about where we wound up, maybe a little bit less than that as far as what we had considered available out of our funds. So just make those points um, at this time. All right, so we will um, open our public hearing, and... I'm going to ask our attorney if he will please read the rules for our hearing. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, the public hearing comment period rules that have been adopted for this special meeting that each speaker will have three minutes to speak. Uh, speakers will not be allowed to take their time and give or a lot to another speaker. And letters from someone not present are not to be used for the public comment. Um, but please pass those to the clerk for the commissioners to read. Those are our special rules for this special meeting. Thank you, Ben. Um, say we we have a we have a room full of folks here. Um, I know several have uh, maybe as many as thirty have uh, have indicated a willing willingness to speak today. We're going to start with anyone who is opposed to this project. So at this point, I'm going to ask for anyone who is opposed to the granting of these incentives if they will come forward. I guess I'm the lone one. My name is William Duell. I reside at 1320 Randolph Tabernacle Road, Ashburn, North Carolina, 27203. I thought that they was going to have an announcement who the, this was going to be given to. Uh, I realize this is just a show trial that just has to be done to, to fulfill everything, and everything's already been signed. But I had some topics I wanted to bring up, but since I've heard the name of it, the Darwin Project, the first thing that comes to mind is the Darwin Award, and if you don't know what it is, go look it up. It's, it's uh, very interesting. 
I am pretty sure this is going to be a lithium battery plant for electric cars. Lithium batteries, lithium is one of the most dangerous substances out there. It causes tremendous amounts of physical and psychological problems. It's one of the top toxic materials on the market. When it burns, it causes brain cancer, colon cancer, all kinds of cancers. But it's still, it's probably still going to go through. The thing I wanted to bring up was a couple of points, and I'll get to the last one first. The only way that these these um, battery projects are feasible, whether they're solar, cars, batteries, or what, is through tax incentives. And if you make less than $750,000 a year, you can get up to a $40,000 tax credit for buying an electric car under the Build Back Better program that may or may not pass Congress. But one of the tip stipulations of that program is it has to be built in a union shop. North Carolina is a right to work state. How is that going to affect this? Are we going to have any control over how this plant is put in? If it's lithium polymer, what we call lithium ion batteries or lithium polymer batteries, when they burn, they give off some of the most toxic substances that can be found. You Mr. can put them out with water. Mr. Dooley, you have one minute. Okay. You can put them out with water, but it's highly dangerous. Is there going to be a bond set up that this plant comes in and runs for 10 years, 15 years, and then they say, okay, we've made enough money, we're going to go somewhere else. Um, is there going to be money to clean up what they leave behind? Or who picks up that bill? All these things, these lithium mines and all this have been in other countries, in other developed countries. Are we making Randolph County one of these? I would like to know where the lithium's coming from, but the one thing I'd like to know is where is the power to power this plant coming from? Is it from the Sharon Hare nuclear power plant? Or is it coming from Blues Creek or one of the propane power plants? Because if you're selling it as a reduce your carbon footprint, you're not reducing your carbon footprint unless it's made with either and well, Tesla's going to build a solar powered battery plant in Texas. Mr. Dula, that's your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. I, I would add, uh, make a comment to, uh, to Bill's points. Um, the county, our, our fire marshal, our public works director, our building inspection folks, engineers have, have been involved and in, on the site and working for weeks in, in this process. So. We're um, and I, I also on these agreements they have they have clawbacks and out outlets through all through here. The, the the document was drafted by the county by Amy Scott and our county attorney and Mr. Morgan and working on that. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of protection built into this process for Randolph County. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else here this morning who wishes to speak against the project? All right. Someone for do we have Phil Moore York. Mayor York. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. And everyone else. I'm Phil Moore York from five oh five Dogwood Drive, Liberty. This is our town manager, Mr. Scott Kidd from NC22 in Bennett. And we're here representing the town of Liberty and the council and the citizens of Liberty as their mayor and town manager in support for approval to assist an end user to locate at this mega site property. Four of our council members have resided in Liberty their entire lives, except going to college and serving our great country in the military. We've watched Liberty growing up to see business growth come and go in good times and bad. The textile and furniture industry that once flourished in Liberty closed. So our families and citizens had to look for employment elsewhere. But with the assistance from Randolph County, Randolph County EDC, Liberty's worked hard for many years to attract new industry and commercial business. 
the town council and citizens are willing to help in any way and hope that this possible project will bring new energy, new jobs, and quality growth back to our area, not only to Liberty, but to Randolph County. <coughs> Liberty is willing to support Randolph County, EDC, Randolph County School System, and any other entities any way possible to help make this a reality. Thank you, County Commissioners, EDC, Planning and Zoning Committee, and everyone involved in this project for your unrelentless efforts in helping make Randolph County one of the best in North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor York. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. <coughs> David Smith. Mayor. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, we appreciate the opportunity to speak this morning. I have with me City Manager John Ogburn. Uh, I have a very brief statement to make uh, to support. The uh, City of Ashboro has been a strong supporter of the proposed Greens Guilford, I'm sorry, G Greensboro Randolph Mega Site since its inception. We commend you for the work done to bring this transformational project to fruition. This project highlights a strong cooperative spirit in the Piedmont Triad. It's taken a lot of years and a lot of hard work, and I commend you for that. The City of Ashboro supports you as you consider the question before you today, and we urge you to approve the incentive proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. John? Thank you. Alan Ferguson? <coughs> Good morning, Chairman Fry, Commissioners, uh, ladies and gentlemen out here. Uh, Alan Ferguson, uh, 4794 Troy Smith Road, Liberty. Uh, as you know, I and uh, other Megasite neighbors have been part of the discussions of this project since June of 2012. It's hard to believe as that is. Well, times change and we change with the times. Uh, I've found that over the years that when I show good faith, goodwill is generally returned to me. I have no reason to believe the circumstances surrounding this project before us today, as described, will prove any different. I, as one of the closest neighbors to Randolph's newest industry, intend to be a good neighbor to our newest neighbor. I see many reasons for optimism now. As a county, Randolph County has decided to meet to discuss, and now we're going to act. We move forward together as contributing adults, and we're in the service of the common good, or we wouldn't be here today. Any business incentive, whether it's a dam, a landfill, social security, or any other social program that we agree to support is a consensus investment in our common future. As with any other successful public program, I hope that everyone will benefit from each of our individual sacrifices as we move forward. In Randolph, we've learned the hard lesson that economic health is not cheaply had. Randolph is technically part of the metropolitan area, but its rural and small town life has suffered, as we know. If we're going to give our fellow citizens the opportunity to climb the economic ladder, Together, then good jobs, proper health care, good schools, clean air and water are all necessities. Our state representatives have met together in the General Assembly and they've decided to fund this project. And they seem to share the sentiment that I just expressed in uh, finding in the preamble to the budget that approved the money for this project that we have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic. <coughs> That's why they said they approved the money. <coughs> so I'm going to look at the substantial support for this project by our county and by my state as an investment in our future that will lead us to better days for us all. And I'm going to trust that this investment will in time grow other investments, such as apprenticeships for young people, support for our local hospital, 
and support for clinics and public education, as well as support for Randolph's wonderful tradition of outdoor blessings. Most important of all, I'm going to expect that this project becomes a vehicle for us, allowing us to keep pace with the world economy. If this project is what it's rumored to be, Randolph really can be on the verge of vaulting into the leading ranks of that economic future. As one of the county residents called upon to make the greatest sacrifices for this project, I am going to do so, and I'm going to do so as a good neighbor, and I'm going to do so as a good neighbor to a good neighbor. That's the spirit that I'm going to take to this project today, and that's the contribution I accept as my own, and with all sincerity, I'm glad to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. We fell. Mm. Reynolds Lisk. Good morning. I'm Reynolds List, a lifelong resident of Randolph County. I live at 1763 Old Lexington Road. Appreciate the opportunity to speak this morning. So beginning in the 1970s, Randolph County has been fighting a battle of declining job market for its citizens. After many decades of slow and steady growth, we began to face the reality of large-scale net job losses in our county and our communities. Lower wage, labor intensive jobs begin to flow overseas. Our mainstay manufacturing base of textiles and furniture have largely disappeared. Just a few of the major employers we have lost in Randolph County since the 70s include Walker Shoe Corporation, General Electric, Black & Decker, Ashborough Hosiery, Burlington Industries, Klopman Mills, the Stedman Corporation, Tyrite Neckwear, Champagne Dye Works, Lux Beans, Boss Neckwear, Banner Hosiery Mill, Pinehurst Textiles, Goodyear Tire and Rubber, Acme McCrary, and many other smaller manufacturing operations. Boss Hong Hosiery and Klauser Furniture are still in business today, but they employ only a fraction of the people they did at one time. Randolph County has lost an estimated 8,000 jobs from 2000 to 2010. We have been in a process of managing decline in our county for over two decades now. In 2008, Forbes magazine ranked Ashborough as the fourth fastest dying city in its peer group in the United States. In 2012, 60 Minutes came to town and did a story on Ashborough based on the 2008 Forbes article. The 60 Minutes piece dealt with Ashboro and Randolph County and how we were trying to claw our way back to prosperity. This proposed project could complete this story in a happy way. Big investments have already been made. The median household income in Randolph County is below the state average. Median household income in the state of North Carolina is below the national average. We now have a unique opportunity to fundamentally change this narrative. Mr. Lesk, one minute. These entities have all, the Bryan Foundation, the Greensboro Randolph Megasite Foundation, the North Carolina Railroad Company, and certainly Randolph County have invested millions in this project. And now the state of North Carolina has approved $338 million for site preparation. And kudos to all those with a vision and courage to make this project possible. The most difficult part of this massive undertaking has been done. We now must take the final step in this process. I encourage you to pass this incentive package and complete the investment that has already been committed for this once in a lifetime opportunity. You as Randolph County Commissioners now have an opportunity to change the economic trajectory of Randolph County and is its citizens for generations to follow. I appreciate your time today and all you do for Randolph County. Let's get this project going. Thank you. Thank you, Reynolds. Bob Shackelford. <coughs> Good 
Good morning, Commissioner. Standing with me is Albert Lassiter, our Vice President for Workforce Development and Continuing Education, who will be a very play a very key role in training workers for the industry that comes to be with us. I must have, when I came in, dropped my speech on the floor somewhere and Reynolds found it. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to mention that <clears throat> we have stood by for years and have seen companies like Black & Decker and Goodyear and Rantex and others like that leave with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs lost and families impacted. We've had this mega site project going on for many years. I've been to the commissioner's meeting where for about two and a half years it was the main subject at every meeting during the public comment period, pro and con. I've served on the mega site committee. We went down to, uh, a few years ago, we went down to Spartanburg and met with them and we saw slides of that community before BMW came in and slides after BMW came in. It transformed that community so that not only did workers begin to work in the BMW plant, they took pictures of the parking lot, now workers are driving BMWs to work. <laughs> it made that much difference in the economy of that community. And it can do the same for us. This is a once in a generation opportunity for economic transformation, not only of Randolph County, but the entire Piedmont Triad. I have been amazed working on the Megasite Committee to see what has gone on behind the scenes in preparing this site with the railroad, moving the power lines, the water, all of the different things, the topography. It has been unbelievable what has gone into the preparation of this site to make it attractive to a major industry. We have stood by for years and have watched projects go to Alabama, South Carolina, Georgia, while we continue to struggle. The EDC, working with the commissioners and others, have brought in a number of businesses and industries that have helped our community. RCC has done our best in training the workforce for these communities, uh, for these uh, businesses and industries, and these have been small victories for the community. Dr. Shackley, 30 seconds. Thank you. The basic economic condition of the county has not changed in a transformational way. We have that opportunity. I read a quote just last night that said, until it's my turn, the right thing to do is to clap for others. Well, we've been clapping for others long enough. It's our turn. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Albert. <coughs> Linda Brown. Good morning, commissioners and county staff. We appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, but first, I wanted to say to Mr. Ferguson, uh, your words were very inspiring and humbling to hear. And I think that summed it up quite well, uh, especially coming from someone who's been through the experience you have with this. Uh, I'm Linda Brown and I'm here to represent the Asheboro Randolph Chamber of Commerce. Also present in the audience today are members of our Board of Directors and our Red Jacket Club. We fervently encourage you to support the incentives that are before you. Uh, the county has already invested both financially and emotionally in this project. It's been a long time coming, but it would not only bring great opportunity to Randolph County, but to the Piedmont Triad and the whole state of North Carolina. So this is really a big deal before you today, and we recognize that, and we recognize the weight of the decision you have on you, as well as the eyes. It must be a little uncomfortable, um, but we support that and we understand that. The addition of a minimum of 1,700 jobs is a real game changer for our economy. A billion dollar capital investment, I mean, let that sink in, a billion dollar initial capital investment and what that means to the future of our property taxes. 
This specific project is on the leading edge of a transportation revolution, and it would put Randolph County at ground zero of that revolution, and the opportunities that would come from that are almost unimaginable to think about, and the doors that opens for us. This is very exciting. We completely support the investment Randolph County has made to date in this project, and we encourage you to unanimously support the continued investment in this today and open those doors for us. This is not only a vote for the future of our local economy, but for our communities and our families. And we thank you very much for um, the thought and the consideration you're giving to it and want you to know that we stand behind you and support the decisions for moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Lauren Hill. What a great day to be in Randolph County. Good morning, uh, Chairman Fry, Commissioners, Manager, Mr. Manager. My name is Lauren Hill. I am the Carolina Corps Regional Economic Development Director for the Piedmont Triad Partnership. I'm pleased to work closely with the Randolph County EDC in my current role. That close working relationship, though, didn't just start when I started working with Piedmont Triad Partnership. For 20 years, I was the president of the High Point EDC. And so I worked closely with Bonnie Renfro for all those many years, working closely not only for the Randolph County, the High Point parts of Randolph County, but for regional matters as well. And even years before that, I was the Government Affairs Director for the Realtors Association and the Home Builders Association, working in Archdale and in Trinity. My interest in Randolph County is not just professional, it's personal as well. My grandparents and generations before that lived in Tabernacle Town Township. Uh, my grandparents lived on Hoover Hill Road, uh, right next to the parsonage of Poplar Ridge Friends Meeting, and that's where my dad grew up. Mr. Chairman, I'm sure you know that area of the county is called Hillsville. Yes. And whether it's true or not, I was told as a small kid that the, I'm a Hillsville Hill, <laughs> that it was named for our branch of the family. So I'm hoping that's indeed the case, and I certainly will pretend like it is, whether it's true or not. Uh, I've always uh, enjoyed posing for photos through the years of the Hillsville sign there at the crossroads. In fact, I did that yesterday, and Mr. Manager, I don't know if it's a county sign or a DOT sign, but somebody has to face that sign and made that first letter I into the letter E. So we need to get that corrected pretty quickly, please. <laughs> and on another personal note, I was honored to serve for several years on the board of Mount Shepherd United Methodist Retreat Center. A study initiated by the Piedmont Triad Partnership more than 10 years ago resulted in the identification of a potential megasite here in Randolph County. Your county's hard work and your commitment, along with important partnerships that have been mentioned here today, led to the megasite coming to fruition. If you go to the PTP website, you'll see this paragraph. Quote, the Piedmont Triad Partnership is a leadership organization bringing together the business community in the Triad region to promote prosperity and growth. We are supporting regional development platforms, including megasite development, the aeroplex anchored by Piedmont Triad International Airport, and the redevelopment of the Whitaker Park complex. We believe supporting these transformational projects will prepare the Triad to compete for major economic development job generators. Commissioners, before you this morning, as you certainly know, is just that kind of transformational project that your county, that this Carolina core region, and indeed all of North Carolina have been working towards. A transformational project that will bring about high quality job growth and impressive tax base creation. This project will anchor the entire 17 county Carolina core region, and it will generate additional success and growth in other parts of Randolph County and indeed throughout the Carolina core Piedmont Triad. On behalf of the board of directors of the Piedmont Triad Partnership, our CEO, Stan Kelly, and our president, Mike Fox, I offer our collective congratulations to you for this milestone achievement. Thank you, Lauren. Bob Crumley. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners. Um, in 2015, I stood before the county commission as then constituted and I told you that not every county commission 
having served as county manager for this county one time, not every county commission has during its length of stay a transformative issue to deal with within the county. It's just fact of life. Not every group of county commissioners deals with these kind of issues all the time. But our county dealt with these issues in the 50s and 60s when it turned down free federal grants to put water and sewer in this county. And we're paying the price for that transformative decision today. Today, you have a unique opportunity, 50, 60 years hence. Once again, a transformative question and issue that will affect this county for the next 50 to 70 years. I did some rough math. 1,750 jobs at about a $60,000 a year average wage, 28,000, I think, $30,000 above Randolph County's current wage. When you put a, a standard economic multiplier of four on that, means that it will be $320 million a year in effective economic impact just from the salaries alone. That means there's going to be some folks that are working there, they're going to buy homes, probably in North Randolph County. They're going to be buying some new cars. They're probably going to be buying who, uh, who knows what type of cars, but if, if what this is going to be is what it says, they will be buying some electric cars. It will transform this community. And I applaud you as of this Board of Commissioners for getting us this far, and I encourage you, do today the right thing for the next 50 years of this county and vote this in absolutely unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. All right. Clerk says that takes care of everyone who signed up. Um, I think the, the tone of our meeting this morning is pretty evident. Uh, is there anyone else who, who came and intended to, to be heard or speak this morning that doesn't want to be left out? Come forward. Both of you. Come ahead. Come on. Go ahead. Pardon me, I forgot to sign in. Do I need to do that? Okay. No, you're good. We get you later. Um, I just wanted to let you know that this project, I work with employees that retire from our industries every day with their retirement plans and things like that. And this is a game changer for standard of living. When you raise a worker's wages by fifteen or twenty thousand dollars from what they've been used to making, it's a game changer. <laughs> It, it changes how much they can put into retirement. It changes whether or not they can own a home versus renting a home. It changes everyday life for them in ways that some may not imagine. But I see it every day, and I see folks in our county as hardworking. That's part of the reason this op opportunity comes to us is because we have so many hardworking, smart citizens in our county that deserve the best paycheck they can get. I think this is one of the best ways to give that to them. And so I'm really speaking on behalf of a lot of my retirees and there are other people in the industry that would say the same thing. This multiplier effect that Bob Crumley just spoke about is real. It matters. It matters whether they can buy cars, whether they can own a home versus renting a home for the rest of their lives. It makes a big difference. Also, Randolph County, I grew up in Randolph County. I'm a resident here. I live on Mountain Valley here. Randolph County has always been a wise steward of its investments. And this is another example of where, where we took a little bit of money. It sounds like a lot of money to us, but in the scope of this project, we spent very little compared to the total. And we got one of the best returns of our investments of anybody involved, in my opinion. So I appreciate your support for this project. Thank you. Will you go ahead and sign up? Hello, I'm Joel Leonard. I'm wearing a crazy mask, but it works. <laughs> Uh, I uh, most of you don't know me. I've really I've lived here for 18 years. I live in Greystone area, and uh, I've uh, um, tried my best to go around the country and coach maker spaces, places that enable people to get access to hands-on uh, equipment and technology and resources so that it complements what they're learning at the community college and they can invent and develop their own activities. In Greensboro, I helped set up the Forge in the first year. We had 16 new companies formed. 
nine patents filed, and over 50 people got jobs from the groups that we were working with in that first year. If we can leverage some of the same type of activities here and, and build a culture where our kids don't want to just be a YouTube star, but want to be somebody that can make something, somebody that can do something, then we'll start getting our locals getting these jobs, not just the people from Michigan and New Jersey that are going to come in and swoop and take these jobs because they're qualified. We've got to support the community college here. We've got to support the other support programs. We also need to factor in, we're not just voting for 1,750 jobs. We're also supporting this, uh, the supply chain of all the other opportunities that will be generated from this. All the vendors, all the contractors, all the people that will be benefiting from this whole scope of project. And we are going to probably secure uh, more employers to move here to be closer to because of supply chain delays and just-in-time inventories and all that we're going to have a lot of local jobs and a lot of new jobs come here so I support you a hundred percent and anything I can do I just put a hundred thousand dollars of my income into a trailer and I'm going out and te teaching the screw-ups how to be leaders and I'm doing anything I can to help you thank you Thank you, Joel. Will you go sign up, Joel, please? Okay. We keep it in our records. Joseph. Hey, good morning. So I'm Luke Estella with Ace of Concrete. I live at 709 Robin Lane in Archdale. So there's been a lot of talk about the spinoff effects, and just a little personal note. I grew up in Michigan, and in 2002 I graduated from college, and I moved to Greenville, South Carolina, precisely because of impact that the BMW plant had on that area. So I can speak firsthand to the, the impact that it has and how that area has grown. And I'd like to see that happen here. I've been here about 10 years now. I love the place. I love the area. Uh, I'd just like to see the same thing happen here. So thank you. Thank you, Luke. All right. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Chairman Fry and other commissioners. Uh, I'm Scott Dar. Uh, I represent Jail Dar and Son and the EDC. Uh, I always want to commend the county commissioners and their foresight for years ago for where we're at now. And I'm hoping that you'll continue with other projects that the county has and we're working hard for going forward because your support brings these projects to fruition. There's a lot of good activity going on in the county right now. The EDC is working very, very hard to, to go forward with, and I just want to thank you for where we're at. As a taxpayer uh, in Randolph County, I like where you're investing your money. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Mark? <coughs> Chairman Fry, County Commissioners, and Senior County Staff, my name is Mark Hensley. I'm the Executive Director of Randolph Senior Adults Association. I live at 1326 Middleton Circle in Asheboro. Honored, it is an honor to speak at this public hearing <coughs> regarding what I consider to be a historic day for our community. The opportunity before this board and the entire county of a major manufacturer locating at the Greensboro Randolph mega site is probably one of the most significant decisions in our history. <clears throat> While I agree with all the comments that have been made before me, I would like, as the executive director of a nonprofit, to speak for voices that are not often heard. And those are voices of people in our community that are in need. We know that um, there will be a significant impact to those individuals <coughs> excuse me, who take a, a job here. We've already heard about that. But let's talk about the positive impact of those who had needs in our community. Um, since moving here 20 years ago, <clears throat> I've often wondered how we encourage our young people to stay in this community, to work, to worship, and build a life here. We are on the cusp of being able to create exactly that type of community for the young people of Randolph Com County by providing their future success with an exciting employment opportunity. Speaking specifically to the demographic I represent, the senior adult population of Randolph County, there are numerous benefits to be considered. First, the anticipated economic impact to our community would be significant 
and support the county in being able to better support organizations in meeting the continued rise, rising demand for services. The Department of Social Services, Communities and Schools, Family Crisis Center, Regional Consolidated Services, Randolph Senior Adults, to name a few, are organizations whose mission it is to serve the citizens of this county. As organizations that rely <coughs> on grant and governmental monies to provide these services, the increased economic impact will provide additional funding that will hopefully filter down to organizations to carry out those missions. Additionally, 1,750 to 3,875 workers at the mega site would undoubtedly produce many individuals who want to give back to their community by supporting the United Way, individual nonprofits such as those mentioned previously, and through their own volunteer efforts. Many of our nonprofit organizations rely heavily on volunteers in order to carry out our mission. I'm very excited about the opportunity we have to potentially bring new volunteers into our community and care about its citizens. Another example of the benefit uh, would be specific to our services. As you may know, Randolph County does not offer public transportation. The Regional Consolidated Area Transportation System, known as RCATS, and operated by Randolph Senior Adults, is the closest option our community has for public transportation. Mr. Hensley, 30 seconds. In prior conversations with the local government officials, we have the opportunity to create public transportation for our cats by providing workforce transportation. These past few years have been very challenging to all of us. Securing long-term health care for our community by finding a new owner for Randolph Health, the COVID pandemic, and now the opportunity to fill the mega site with a very well-known company will bring significant jobs and financial investment to our county, are examples of the challenges faced by you, our Board of County Commissioners. I'd like to thank you now for how you have battled for the long-term viability of our community and encourage you to pass this economic passage. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Mark. Anyone else? Chairman Fry and the Commissioners, uh, I'm Walker Moffitt, One Richland Place, Ashboro. I come to before you today to speak as the Chairman of the North Carolina Zoo. In the early 1970s, a vision was created for the zoo, uh, met with some skepticism to have a large tract of land become the largest tourist attraction in the state with a million visitors. Today, we're here to thank you for your hard works and effort and vision and commitment for a very similar project of even grander scale. And I Thank you very much for bringing that to us and, uh, and applaud your efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Walker. Mr. Chairman, can I clarify a question that's been asked yes. about the uh, open leaf? I, I was going to bring that. You go ahead. Yes. It's brought to my attention that some people had a question about the, uh, the funding for the training for the facility. Um, I've met several times with uh, w with our potential customers, and uh, in fact, just a couple months ago, uh, Chancellor Woodson from NC State, Chancellor Martin from A and T, and I stood together face to face talking with uh, the leaders of this company about how our colleges, and universities, and community colleges will collaboratively create the best workforce they will find anywhere they could locate. The Golden Leaf Foundation has expressed confidence in us in doing this in that they have pledged $25 million for RCC to build a training facility on site at the manufacturing plant. And so we will be working with the other community colleges and universities in the area, but we will be the lead college running a training facility on site funded by the Golden Leaf Foundation. I wanted to clarify that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bob. I, I was going to bring that up. Uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, I also want to mention um, that the water and sewer to this project is being run from the city of Greensboro. Uh, every, every inch of that property lies within the boundaries of Randolph County. But Greensboro, the Golden Leaf Foundation also helped pay for that water sewer line to the site. But the city of Greensboro has pledged $21 million, which is more than our investment, to bring water and sewer to that site. So our, our investment 
has leveraged to this point millions of dollars over what we have in this project. Uh, said about about two thirds of the property was bought and paid for by by the North Carolina Railroad. So we've had good partners to uh, to help this happen, and uh, I think today there's probably somewhere around seventy million dollars already. That doesn't count the money that the state of North Carolina has allocated in their budget to complete some of these other parts of the project on site. So uh, Randolph County's benefited by being where we are and having the neighbors that we do. So sometimes we don't we don't think uh, what we should or be appreciative of our neighbors, but they've certainly been a part of this process. Anyone else? We're going to close the public hearing. William? Since I'm the only one that spoke against this project, I'd like to make something clear. I'm not against the banking side of the building of manufacturing. I spent over 50 years of my life in manufacturing. I'm just again bringing in, and if it is, a lithium battery plant, people just realize how dangerous this stuff can be. And it doesn't last. It's almost like radioactive material. It gets in the water. It stays here for a while. It's not going to go away. It builds up in the bottom. I just want people to realize we are bringing something in our neighborhood that we may not be able to get rid of. I would love to see us bring in a chip plant, in a pharmaceutical plant, anything that is not a toxic waste to our community. I just hope people understand that. All right. Okay. To the Board of County Commissioners, do we have any questions right now? Are we ready? We have two motions. Do we have uh, to close the public hearing? Oh, yes. I have a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Kidd. Is everyone spoken? Yeah. We'll make sure everybody Everybody's has a spoken. Yeah, we'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I have a second. Second. All right. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. And it's closed. So for the board, we have two uh, motions. One is to uh, says approve or deny the resolution authorizing the county of Randolph to enter into an economic development incentive contract. And the second one is a motion to approve or deny the resolution authorizing the conveyance of real property for economic development. So we will take the first motion uh, on conveyance on the economic development incentives contract. Do I have a motion on the uh, resolution? Mr. Chairman, I'll be glad to make that motion. Usually with a motion like this, that this kind of impact requires some kind of really long sermon. I think the people of Randolph County have spoken really well today, so I appreciate you being here. So I'm not going to bore you with that and belabor that. But I'd love to make the motion to consider a resolution authorizing the county of Randolph to enter into an economic development incentive contract. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion or questions? Mr. Chairman, I guess is this the time for us to do a little talking? Yes. Okay. Uh, I appreciate all the comments this morning. Um, as um, Dr. Schaffer, you said that you dropped your notes. I, I, I had several notes here that I was going to refer to. I think Alan Ferguson picked mine up out in the, in the hall. So, uh, Mr. Dula, I, I live in that area, in the neighborhood, and I have those concerns. And I've, throughout the process, I've asked those questions, and I will continue to ask those questions. Uh, I probably ask more questions than Commissioner Haywood has, which is quite a number. So, um, I, I think this is um, this this portion of where we've gotten to, at least from the the, and I'm going to use the term neighborhood uh, community. Maybe a bit too too large. I, I'm going to use the neighborhood, the folks there in the community that are going to be directly impacted. I think in some respects it offers closure to those folks to move on to another chapter. Uh, the next chapter of, uh, of an end user coming in into the site. So uh, many of those folks have, uh, you know, over the past 10 years or so faced uncertainty on, you know, what's going to happen. And I think this lends uh, some closure to that, uh, to know what's going to happen in, the, in that local neighborhood. And uh, I think that that's a positive uh, going forward. Uh, it's, it's a new, new chapter. We're closing one chapter. We're moving into another one. I think today probably congratulations are in order, <clears throat> but I look at this as a, I see Larry Pinkave up here on the front row. Uh, I think Carolina basketball. This is this is like a tournament. This is not the end. Uh, we can celebrate a little bit today, but 
we got a we got a ball game tomorrow, and we can't afford to to let that down. I think Rensley said that uh, we need to get the project going. So there's a lot more work that, that's to be done. And my aim uh, as as the commissioner here uh, representing that area is to make sure that Randolph County uh, gets the benefits of the investment, and that means jobs for Randolph County residents. That means investment in Randolph County uh, but other industries that might uh, also choose to locate here to be an advocate for Randolph County because not only is the investment uh, that made in dollars and we're looking to make here today, but it's the investment in, in, in people. Uh, I, Dr. Schaffer, I'm glad you mentioned the, the well, was one of the questions I had was the role of the community college in, in training folks. So over the past week or so, I've had a lot of my questions answered. And almost in every case, uh, they've been answered in a positive light. There's still going to be a lot of unknowns out there as we go through the process. But um, as I used to play a little bit of softball back in the day, and when we were uh, first, first, first one up to bat, I always called out, well, it's opening day. So today is opening day. It's a new day. And uh, I'll look to see if we're going, that we will move forward. Those are my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, David. Any other commissioner that we're in discussion on the motion? All right. Hearing none, those in favor of the motion to approve the resolution will say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And it passes unanimously. Thank all of you. Our second consideration is the motion to authorize the conveyance of real property for economic development. Do I have a motion on the uh, resolution? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to approve the resolution and authorizing the conveyance of the real property. Do I have a second? Second. And a second by Commissioner Kidd. Discussion on this motion. I guess some of the same comments. Same, right? same thing applies. It's, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at all this as kind of... <laughs> Uh, if we don't do one and do the other, it kind of don't make a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? Those in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And it passes unanimously. I want to say this. <laughs> Thank you. I, I want to say this. Uh, in our audience today is... Uh, Former County Commissioner Harold Holmes. Uh, I had called Harold and, and Arnold Lanier. They were on the board at that time when our first motions were involved in taking, uh, putting money into this project and getting involved with the Greensboro Randolph Megasite uh, project. Uh, and I'm glad Harold's here to participate in this vote today. Um, there's two other commissioners that was on that board Ten years ago, uh, Stan Haywood and Phil Kemp, and neither one of those gentlemen are, are with us now. I, I feel them. I'm not being emotional. I, I I know they are, and they were supporters. Phil Phil was the first one just to really jump in and take this thing and and really uh, get behind it, and get it going. But uh, I I want to thank them, uh, present and past for uh, their support and, and, and having the foresight to, to get us to the point that, that we've been able to, since we bought our first track of land. And Randolph County bought the first acre of land in that site. And if we weren't going to put money in it, nobody else was. And as I said several times this morning, our money's been leveraged many times over. So uh, thank those who helped to, to make it and, and voted to, to bring us along. We had a disappointment few years back with the uh, Toyota Mazda, but that's all over and behind us now. So thank you. Thank all of you for your participation today and what you do for this county every day th that uh, you go about your days. So uh, any comments from commissioners? Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I think it would be remiss not to say, well, one, this project is about the taxpayer for Randolph County, and it's it's your money, it's your project, it's your mega site. So everybody in Randolph County, thank you. But I really appreciate the comments you made about previous leaders of this board. They preceded myself and, and some of the others. But I do want to say, and hopefully most of you in the room will agree with me, 
we wouldn't be here today with this project without all the partners that have been mentioned and I, God knows how much I appreciate them. But the chairman of this board, uh, through his leadership, uh, also very much made this project possible. So I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your leadership all the way through. Thank you. Thank you. And I've gained a lot of respect, more respect than I already had through this process, and especially today um, with Alan and, and David and the comments that they've made. Um, there's a lot going on, and I, I, I'm just so appreciative to live where I live and be a part of, of this process. So thank all of you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? We are adjourned. We don't need a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think you'll take a second.